What's up you guys? Marty Schwartz here with Marty Music. Thanks for hanging out for another lesson. I'm gonna show you every C major chord using the cage system, which is just a great way of becoming a better musician, better guitar player. I'm gonna show you all about it. Also, I have a link for a full-on premium course on the cage system in the first comment down there. Uh, only, if you, only if you're interested. And uh, let's have some fun. Here we go. Ooh. All right, every C major chord using the caged system. The cage system is basically thinking of chord shapes through the C shape, the A shape, the G shape, the E shape, and the D shape. And by knowing those, you'll be able to play a C major chord or any other chord, for that matter, up and down the whole neck. Some of these f shapes are a little weird until you um, break them into like micro chords, like triads is what they would be called. But anyway, here's what we're gonna start with. Very basic, we're gonna start with the C major. Now remember, there's an open G in that chord and an open high E. So like theoretically, if you pretended that you needed to put your finger on this nut right here to get the open strings, then you would actually, it'd be pretty weird, but you'd have to play it like this because of that index finger right there. See that? That's gonna come in later, but right now we're playing this. So that's the C shape to play a C major chord. So let's spell out caged. A is the next shape. Now when we think of A, like we're um, referring to like the open form of it. C, A, G, E, and D. So, but we're gonna do it where every single shape is still a C major. So we gotta know where the roots are. So for the C major chord, it's here. That's the C note on the A string third fret. The A shape, A, whole step to B, half step to C. So that's the A shape up to where it would be for C, but we have to bar across, just like when you have the A shape, you have the open strings and the nut, now we gotta do what we normally see as a bar chord. So the A shape to play a C major chord, the root's there on the third fret A string, and then ring finger comes across. So that's the C shape for C, the A shape for C, and we're gonna dig into a few of these in a second. So that's A, now we need the G shape. Now, when you play the G chord right here, the root's there on the E string, so we just need to find C on the E string. It's right here on the eighth fret, so here's the G shape, right? Why does it sound weird? The open strings haven't changed. They need to be, see? They need to be barred right here. So how do you do that? Well, this is one of those weird shapes. Most guitar players won't play this entire six string shape, but just to show you what it looks like, it's that, you know, with the ring finger, middle finger, and then pinky up there on the high E, and then you have to bar. So it's basically like your index finger is the capo and you're playing a G major chord. Like I said, I don't, I don't ever play that full shape other than when I'm talking about the cage system because what we're gonna do is the, the, we're gonna play some more popular versions of that. The most popular being the Hendrix major chord. but that's coming from that. So the cage system's really about visualizing the chord shapes, all right? So we have C with the C shape. We have C major with the A shape. Now G is the next in caged. So now we've played that. Okay, so what's the next letter? E, well this is one that we see a lot. Roots right there on the eighth fret E string and we have the E shape, so here's the C major using the E shape of the caged. C, A, G, E, and then finally D is right here. Now that's just the three finger version, which is very handy, but we wanna visualize what that capo would look like with the D shape. So most uh, guys or guitar teachers or players will refer to it as this way. 
finding the root right there. Remember, we're looking for a C major chord. And then we're going to play 12th fret G. I have to change positions here for you to see it and for me to do it. Because I don't really play this one much. I see guys use this one, but see that little D shape there? And then I have the root right there. So the caged of a C major chord is C, A shape of C, the G shape, the E shape, and then the D shape. And then what do you get? You get the C shape again, an octave up, and it looks pretty weird. So it's like the index finger is the uh, capo. Just like a C chord, right? So the cage system, it's really more about being able to visualize these because we're gonna break them into little little like pieces of chords. Now, obviously you've got, oh, and you've got the A shape again, right there, it just starts over. Could almost get to that G one again too. And it just keeps repeating. C, A, G, E, D. And that went up and down the whole neck for a C major chord. So the obvious ones are C, like that, the A shape, and the E shape. But these other shapes are extremely, extremely helpful for soloing and for rhythm playing. And it helps you learn the guitar neck. So check this out. The C major. One thing that I like off of this shape is this upper register triad where you're just thinking of it as this. That's a C major chord, completely different than that full one. And as a rhythm player, it's a great little option. It's a great thing to see, you can pick it out. Okay, so that's a good one to keep track of. Now with the G shape, I was talking about, this is the full shape, but what we really just wanna focus on is that. So you can visualize this part of the C major chord in the A form, and then just put your index finger there. And from that G shape, you have this note right here, which is the major third of the chord. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bar across the fifth fret and then play ring finger right here. Now the root's right here. It's all part of that, but most guitar players are in this little zone right here. Now the major pentatonic is underneath this shape as well. Soloing, I can visualize those chords as well. So another one is upper part of that full G shape. You can just visualize that and then put your pinky on the root right here. You can cover that one as another voice. And then also, like I said, you have a great C major pentatonic box and a lot of those notes work as great embellishments within the chord. So 
that's from the G shape. Now, the E. What we have is you have this F shape. You also have the upper register triad, which leads to this kind of stuff. That's another shape I need to show you that comes from the D. But so, there's that E shape, lots of stuff in there, but the upper register triads or the lower register triad, you have, or you have the power chord, double stop, this double stop, and this one. All right, so now remember with the D shape, I played these fingers for D and then the re right here. Oh, sorry, there it is. One of the more common shapes that you'll see with this is this inversion. And so what you're doing, this is a C major chord. I'm visualizing it by finding the root on the D string here. So that's a C note, which is 10th fret of the D string. So you'd have this, 12th fret E, A string muted by the middle finger. So instead of the, this major third up here, we're, we've switched it to the low E. So nothing's changed except when you play a chord where a lower note is not the root of the chord, but a note of the chord, that's an inversion. And my pinky and index are basically, and my palms, basically muting that high E out. Now with the C shape, here's the one I use constantly. And Hendrix too, and John Mayer, and down the line. It's coming from the C shape. Like if you barred across the 12th fret and then your fingers had to form an entire C major looking shape. But what we're doing instead is we're gonna just play a, a we're not gonna play the A string. And so what that gives us is this really cool thing. And so that's middle finger on the root, which is a C note and that's 13th fret B string index finger on the 12th fret G, and then middle finger on the 14 of the D. If I bar across, then I can hammer this. And voila! Then we're back at the A shape with that upper triad right here again. So let's see if I just strum a C chord with my looper. C. And then the D shape.
So here's where it gets interesting, and then I will leave you with this for you to think about. It's when there's more than one chord and you know this stuff. It opens up so many possibilities and you can get more creative with your rhythm parts. So something real simple, C major to F, if I use the same concepts but with the F major, etc. Uh, let's see this. So all these different things for F, if I go C and F, you get stuff like this. So here we go. All right, you guys, there it was. I hope you got something from it. I really do. Thank you for supporting Marty Music. I appreciate you subscribing here, clicking the bell notification. You can, uh, you know, like the video, comment if you feel like it. It really helps me out and I do appreciate it. And anyway, that's it for now. Hope to see you again real soon. See ya.